say combat reporter, it usually brings to mind the picture of a battered, unshaven, weary correspondent trudging through the mud. Now, it may surprise you, but this lady, who has covered wars and violence and danger ever since she was 18 years old, she is a woman who has covered seven wars in the past five years, and her name is Dickie Chappelle. It's very honorable what she did, and, you know, I'm, I'm shocked that people don't know who she was. We don't even know her name. And I had never heard of Dickie Chappelle in my entire life. And um, when I was um, actually first in the Coast Guard, one of the people that I had worked with said, hey, you've got to check out this book called Brown Water Black Beret. And um, in that book, there's a chapter about Dickie Chappelle. She did something that was not very common at a time where it was not easy to do what she did. The thing that sticks in my mind is that she said, the main thing you have to always remember about covering combat is you've got to survive to get the story and the pictures out to the world. If you get killed in there, it's all for nothing. The, the sum of her core was that she really was doing this because she felt she was doing the right thing, that she was telling people things about war that they needed to know and that she was a, a good person to do or just as good as anybody. Um, she felt that her gender should never get in the way. I grew up in the heart of the United States and I believed that I could do anything I really wanted to do. And I still believe it. In the first place, I hope you will never say it without a sense of its uniqueness. You have just defined Americanism. Because nowhere else in the world, and I've now worked in my 44th country, nowhere else in the world can a woman, about 17, or an old lady in her 40s like I am, Nowhere else in the world can she say, I can do anything I want to do. Dickie had an eye for a dramatic picture. My father taught her photography. He taught her composition. And she grabbed onto that like an artist. I mean, she was a Rembrandt of composition. I like the, the photos that she took often of, of soldiers um, just being soldiers. Um, you know, not necessarily the, the battle shots, and I think that we tend to look at a conflict and um, revere the people who take the photos of, the, of things blowing up. But to understand a war, you have to be in the back of the, of the line. Um, you know, behind the front line, and you know, she spent a lot of time in the in, in the front as well. But um, but I was really captivated by her images from the back um, of soldiers having a smoke. I mean, they're timeless in in many ways because I could take that that same image, and in my mind, I could see you know soldiers or Marines that I had spent time with in Iraq or Afghanistan. And if you go honestly to, to tell a story, to document what you're seeing, how can you miss the civilians? I mean, they're part of, they're part of the conflict. They still lived even as they were trying not to die. She could capture a moment. She could see a moment that was very, very dramatic and she could capture that. And, um, and the one thing about uh, shooting war or actuality, they don't stop and wait for you to get the picture. When I see the World War II photos, I see more of that kind of reflection of somebody who was more of a, of a student, you know, taking those types of, of photos. Plus, the war was a little bit different for her because she spent most of the time on Iwo Jima and Okinawa. She was covering field medical units. 
or she was on the hospital ship, uh, on a couple of hospital ships, actually. And so the action's a little bit different. You know, you have, you have less urgency of getting a photo now and getting your head down. I think that, that it's important that people know who our heroes are, all of them, even the ones that are non-traditional. She seemed very curious about the experience she was living. She noticed details. She wasn't necessarily focused on, you know, what she, she thought people wanted to see, you know, or, or, or images that would support a certain storyline. I mean, she, her images suggest that she just went with a camera and a pen, you know, and just documented what was going on around her. You know, and all the research I did on her and all the uh, reading and, and, and looking at her photos, I couldn't find much ego. It was refreshing in a way, but it suggested a humility that she carried with her as she went about um, documenting war. I think that the camera probably helped her focus her fears. You know, she's got a job to do, and so you can't avoid that camera that you've got held in, held in front of your face. And I always feel that, it, and to, to at least the way I look at it, is that you know that having a camera does provide that sort of sense of mediation. You're out of the moment because you're focusing on something else. And so I think that the focus probably helped her um, continue to move forward. Her camera was probably her shield. Her photographs are so telling, which is what's so remarkable about this book, is that you really get to see um, the war as she exper experienced it through her camera. And, you know, she, she saw a lot. And, you know, I didn't see her stopping herself from taking a picture. I mean, she took some remarkable images um, on instinct. She was a pioneer, a real pioneer. Uh, and you don't go into that lightly. You go into that trying to prove something. You go in there trying to prove you're just as good as any man at that job. And I think she proved that.